I'm Kat. And I'm Haley. And this is Night Classy. A tipsy night class teaching the oddities and curiosities you never learned in school. Where are you taking us for this learning journey, Haley? We'll be learning about an imposter princess. Ooh, uh, an imposter. An imposter. Well, really a duchess, but... Is this the girl that had that Netflix series about her? No, it's not. I want to watch that, though. Yeah, Um, I, I started it, and I should watch the rest of it, but story of my life I don't finish TV shows but you did start Bridgerton I did I don't know if I'll finish it but I like it I just finished the first season okay 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 yeah I plan on continuing to watch it but you know you never know what could happen (laughs) I loved the first season second season isn't quite hitting that's what I've heard as hard for me Mm -hmm. so TBD. Okay. What do you? I teach? know it's based on a book. Did they go off book for the second season? Is that what happened? According to my friend from work, they went pretty off book um, for all of it. All she of said it. because okay. I was like, I want to read the books now, and she was like, Don't even bother with the books. They make the women even more helpless and seemingly like dumb almost in the books and the men even <laughs> Is it more satire? misogynistic no I don't think oh. so yeah she's like I started to read the books because I love the TV series but she said no don't do it oh, when were they written 1700 no I don't know okay <laughs> and also weird. it's just what somebody told me so take that with a grain of salt yeah I might still try it but there's so many books that I have in the queue that it was kind of a relief to take those off okay Okay. Well, I just started Breaking Dawn, so you Let's know what? Go. I don't have any more time in my life the, for other books. One of the best books. The ever. best book. <laughs> and you know what? I actually I want to eat my words for a second because I always said Eclipse is my favorite book, and I hate New Moon. Um, and that I think was because like I hate Jacob, and I still hate Jacob. But as an adult reading them, because I haven't read them since I was a kid. I really liked New Moon. I thought, I think New Moon is the best book. You're right. Wow. I'm so <laughs> shocked. People never shared that opinion, it feels like. this. I, I'm on top of the world. Yeah. It just, I think it <laughs> It was more interesting than the other books. It yes. Like had, it's so emotional. It was, yeah. It, and the other ones, like, Eclipse just felt like a filler book. Like, the plot totally in was. Eclipse kind of gets lost. Um, the amount of times that I've had to been like, what even happened in <laughs> yeah. Eclipse? I don't know. All I remember is Jacob being warm and Edward being mad. Yeah. And I think that's, that's all you need to know. That's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> I th- when I was a kid, I really liked it because it... it it was like Bella and Edward just living their normal lives together for the most part. And that's what I found like comforting yeah. and fun. But you're right. New Moon is a good book. It's it slaps. Better. Oh, my God. The mm. way I cried yeah. reading it in sixth grade. <laughs> in <laughs> I class. vividly remember reading that book in class and like it's a core memory. Almost crying. And I wanted to cry really bad to be like dramatic Don't. and brooding. But like I <laughs> couldn't quite do it. <laughs> The only thing that makes her cry is her birthdays and not anymore. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I'm over it. Almost. Almost. <laughs> well, what are you teaching us? Okay. Hold on. I have to adjust my headphones for this. One moment. Well, she's adjusting that. Haley, look at this Bridgerton meme I made for <laughs> Kat's brother and his girlfriend. This is after me watching a couple episodes of Bridgerton. <laughs> You didn't watch a couple episodes. You slept through that. I don't know how you sleep through Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah, it is it is quite sexual in nature. The the meme is uh Mary Jane and Spider Man. Uh, yeah, and she's saying, Tell me the truth, I'm ready to hear it. And Peter Parker says Bridgerton is porn, that's why you're addicted. <laughs> At it's least we true. have classy porn. This is very nice yeah, porn. It is it's classy porn, porn. It's porn with a plot. Which, uh, yeah. Porn with a plot. Mm-hmm. PWP. What's not to like? <laughs> there were just some montages where like she was getting eaten out on a ladder, and I was like, this is porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that honeymoon montage is long. <laughs> I was coming in and out of sleep, and I'm like, what? What are we watching? <laughs> Tommy was like, I wonder what it was like to film that. I was like, it was either very awkward or very easy. (laughs) I'm sure it was awkward. Like the actors and actresses like pretty much have to have sex. Yeah. 
like, I would be like, I'm so, I can't, I, I'm, I can't laugh. I can't stop laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, there's no amount of money in the world, I think, that could get me to do that. I would be so uncomfortable. There's yeah. no way. <laughs> it's a no for me, but I will watch it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I will it. not fall asleep during that. <laughs> do you want to hear what I'm teaching? I do. Okay. Um, I thought it would be really funny. And now I'm like, maybe it's Is not it bugs. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't lying last week. She told us it was going to be a epitomology. Is that entomology. what entomology? And I stand by that because today I'm going to teach you about cockroaches. Oh, okay. I feel like there's a lot that I need to know about cockroaches. There is. Yeah. They have personalities. Yeah, they are I social. It. They're herd well, animals. It's for crazy. How long they've yeah. been around. I would hope they've evolved. Yeah, they've been around a long personality time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so insulting. Their like prefrontal cortex is just fucking massive <laughs> now after all these years. <laughs> and it was funny because today I I brought my students into the gym because we finished our work or whatever. But as I was doing my notes in the gym today. A, cro- a cockroach was running across the floor and it was as I was like typing about how they they carry diseases and this kid goes over and stomps on it and then crouches next to it and pokes it with his finger and I was like no <laughs> they have diseases <laughs> just as they foretold yeah. like, go wash your hands right now <laughs> why would he touch it though what? I don't know no no I, no, no 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 after uh, after squishing it, that's I don't mm-hmm. have any problem with touching bugs. Bugs are cool, <laughs> but after you kill it, yeah, I don't know. That's where I draw the line. I'm laughing because we have a live <laughs> raccoon in the studio that just pissed on Haley, and we're like, "Do you know these diseases?" <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. I kiss our baby raccoon on the mouth, so I have diseases now. But yeah, we do have a baby raccoon. Yes, uh, her name is you. Petunia. We're trying to find a rehabber to take her, but they're all freaking full because it's Spring baby time. season. So we're uh, taking care of her ourselves uh, under the guidance of professionals for the time being. And we also have another foster animal. We have a puppy <laughs> as, as well that we found running loose in our neighborhood. He's not chipped. We haven't been able to find his home. So if you or anyone you know wants a puppy... Come we'll drive him, him to you because he can't stay with us. He terrorizes the cats and it's In problematic. Georgia does not like him. No, her. she is an only child. 1,000%, except mm-hmm. for the raccoon. Um, well, what? as long as she stays away from the raccoon, she yeah. is not nice to the raccoon. Can you guys keep Petunia... Just it's tempting. Yeah. We do have a big tree in our backyard that has a big hollowed out center. So yeah, yeah. and she's so attached to you, Alec. I know she I know. loves she's Alec. I fucked up neck. real hard. <laughs> Alec is her mom. She's imprinted on him fully. She Alec like walks in the room and she runs to him. It's so cute. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Yeah, she's darling. We just started it transitioning her to solid food so we've been giving her banana and (laughs) last night we were trying to feed her these little pieces of banana but she doesn't quite understand biting or chewing because she's used to drinking milk so she tries to nurse on the banana but then she's like kneading on your hand while you're trying to hold the banana and then she ends up just like pushing the banana away and it's very cute oh she makes little noises she doesn't know i wonder what my first solid food was Mm. Do you guys know what yours was? No, probably applesauce or something. Oh, okay, applesauce. That's a My good question. Just told me it's gonna go to sleep. Well, I don't have a charger. You better get to it. <laughs> I'm going to pull up my notes on my phone just in case. Just in case. Jick, J-I-C. But yes, the puppy is also very cute. Uh, we named him Slippery Howie. <laughs> so if you want a puppy, <laughs> we have one. He met with a possible owner today. So Yeah, he spent crossed. the day with a potential owner. Okay, fingers right Fingers crossed that good, works good, out. Good. Yeah, I hope so. He deserves a good home. Yes, a sweetie. he does. Anyway, are you ready to hear about cockroaches? I am. Okay. I am indeed, and I'm intrigued to see what bug you come up with next week. <laughs> <laughs> what if I really did just keep... T- I think this is the last like, this week. This is Night Classy, where I talk about bugs, and I talk about what other random <laughs> shit I can find other than bugs. But my fun fact this week does have to do with bugs. Ooh, I'm ah. excited about it. So if you didn't know, cockroaches are a type of insect... 
They are typically reddish brown in color and have a thick exoskeleton with two sets of wings. They are commonly regarded as vermin, though only 30 of the 4,600 species of cockroaches reside with humans, and only four species are the ones we think of as pests. Oh my gosh, and vermin is such an insulting word. I feel like well, they they're, are it's like vermin. a negative they're connotation. Nasty. Yeah, but they're also kind of the OG bug, you know? Kind of. They're they are very old in my mind. Yeah, four thousand species over four thousand six hundred species. Jeez. I mean, most cockroaches live like in the wild in the forest and stuff. We don't even see them or think of them. Yeah. Usually cockroaches are about the size of a thumbnail, but their size does vary greatly. The smallest cockroach are the Atafila cockroaches, which live alongside leafcutter ants and only grow to be about 3.5 millimeters long. So oh, teeny just tiny. A little guy. The longest cockroach species is the Megaloblata longipenis. <laughs> 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 I was so excited when I found that out. <laughs> That's it? The mega low blada longy penis. There's two ends in the <laughs> penis, so I did kind of embellish a little bit the first time. I like it better as penis. Longy penis. They can reach four inches long and two <laughs> inches across. So it's not that long of a long <laughs> penis. <laughs> yeah, who named it? Y'all, you're really exposing yourself. <laughs> Should have been average average penis. penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Statistically average. (laughs) (laughs) A central and South American species called the Megaloblata blabriodes is not quite so long, but boasts a wingspan of over seven inches. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Wingspan. Yeah. It's wide like an eagle. Wide like an eagle. (laughs) (laughs) It's like your mom. <laughs> Wide. <laughs> now you're like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Am I right, <laughs> gentlemen? All right. So <laughs> I like that you made like a great penis joke, and then when I made it your mom joke, it was like real silent in here. <laughs> like, come on, Alec. It's we not don't that kind of joke about it's that. It's not that kind of show. <laughs> Cockroaches, like Haley's been saying, are considered primitive insects, and they've been around for a really, really long time. The oldest cockroach-like fossils on record are from the Carboniferous period, which was 320 million years ago. Inconceivable. That means nothing to me. Yeah, it's impossible (laughs) to conceptualize. (laughs) I can't. I won't. (laughs) Don't even try. It's not worth it. It would break my brain. (laughs) It's believed that these fossils are a common ancestor of mantises and modern cockroaches, but because hind wings and mouth parts are not preserved in the fossil record, nobody can be sure. Also, Petunia is like walking around the floor right now, and I'm distracted by how cute she is. I know. Let's just... Sorry, I can lock her up if you want. No, don't lock her up. I love her. Never lock her. Up. She walks so funny. She, she has like, like a waddles. little hunchback and waddles around. It's so It cute. looks like how an alligator walks. Yeah. Yes, totally. <laughs> the earliest modern cockroach fossil dates back to the Cretaceous period, 145 to 60 million years ago. But modern analysis points to cockroaches actually evolving much earlier during the Jurassic, which means up to 200 million years ago. Again, Numbers, man. (laughs) Millions, billions. It's all the same to me. Sorry, Petunia's chirping, so I thought I'd hold her up to the microphone to see if she'll Let her speak. But now she's being quiet. You can hold her up to the camera, too. I'll make a video around. She has a tale to tell. Here she is. This is real. We we got this thing just to go viral on TikTok. We stole her out of the wilderness. Just kidding. We did in the state we live in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No one crossed state lines. (laughs) I don't know why you're asking, but that's the truth. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is. Cockroaches live just about everywhere, but are most densely populated in tropic and subtropic areas. And while cockroaches prefer heat, some species can withstand temperatures. Do you want to guess how cold? Negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Try again. Negative 120 degrees Fahrenheit. 
even lower. What? <gasps> no fucking way. <laughs> they can survive in temperatures as low as negative 188 degrees <gasps> Fahrenheit. Which, Vermin. To that, our foreign listeners, that's negative 122 degrees Celsius. That's too much. Yeah. That's unnatural. It is. It is. And <laughs> they do this by producing their own antifreeze out of glycerol that's already in their bodies. Okay. Not nuts. Okay, cockroaches. Yeah, they're resourceful. Cockroaches are nocturnal and prefer dark, warm spaces. The only exception to this is the Asian cockroach, who is still nocturnal, but is also attracted to light and pastel colors. <laughs> so a fashion forward queen. <laughs> Bright summer. Cockroaches reside in human homes, forests, deserts, the Arctic, and even aquatic environments. Aquatic cockroaches live near the surface of bodies of water and dive for food. Some do this by using the tip of their abdomen as a snorkel, and others carry an air bubble under their thoracic shield so they can breathe underwater. Little buddies. Yeah. What are they? What's their food that they dive for? Um, probably just like little uh, lake bugs yeah. and algae and stuff. They can pretty much eat anything. They're just dumpsters, man. <laughs> the cockroaches most of us think of live in our homes, but the vast majority of cockroach species live in leaf litter on the forest floor or in stumps or under bark. And while most of us think of cockroaches as nasty, brainless garbage creatures, they're actually shockingly intelligent. They have social structures that care for their young and exhibit distinct personalities. Do they know math? They don't know. Well, they actually kind of do know math. So cockroaches are mostly considered gregarious, meaning they're inclined to aggregate into groups similar to herd animals. And these behaviors have not been extensively studied, but from what they we know, they leave fecal trails that carry a scent. And then other cockroaches follow these trails to find food, water, and other cockroaches to hide with. And they kind of go wherever the most cockroaches are. So they do know some math and that they know what's more and what's less. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm hearing you, but I'm also seeing a baby raccoon know, on your shoulder. I know, and she's shoulder. crawling in my hair and chirping in my ear, and it's very distracting. But we don't want it to stop, No, right? I'm not going to move her. <laughs> oh, this she's is, an angel. If I make videograms from this episode, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, is no one going to talk about that there's a raccoon on her? <laughs> yeah, uh, her name is be... Petunia. <laughs> <laughs> there's also going to be 800 comments calling us animal abusers and saying you shouldn't keep raccoons as pets. Which is true, but it was leave her to die or take her in our house and feed her kitten formula. So you tell me who's the animal abuser. Anyway, um, let's see. So cockroaches exhibit collective decision making, which basically, oh my God, she's like grabbing my neck and playing with my hair, <laughs> which basically means if the majority of cockroaches choose to be in a certain place, the other cockroaches will choose to stay with them. And this behavior was tested in a study that used scented roach sized robots. So like uh, okay. little cockroach robots. <laughs> and Sounds like a spy device. It does. It they should probably like rebrand after this experiment is over. <laughs> but it was found that like the real cockroach the real cockroaches and just in general, they choose their hiding spots based on two things, how dark it is and how many other cockroaches are in there. So the study found that when they placed enough cockroach robots in one place, the living cockroaches would favor the place with all the cockroaches over a dark place, which shows wow, that their okay. priority is to be in large groups of other roaches Safety over anything and numbers. else. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like the cicadas where it's Maybe there's so many of them that mm -hmm. the chances of you being eaten are lower because there's so many of you. Yeah, that's exactly predators right. Predators get full. <laughs> A study of German cockroaches found that cockroaches are socialized. The study raised some cockroaches in isolation and others in a group. It found that the cockroaches raised in isolation exhibited more reserved personality traits. They were less likely to leave hiding places to explore, were less interested in food, and less curious when new things were introduced. The males also took longer to engage in breeding with females. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah. It's like 
I don't know. Maybe it was naive of me to think that cockroaches are just bugs that exist on instinct and they just are the way they are. Yeah, it just makes you think how complicated these tiny creatures are and how we're really just bugs to aliens. We are. Yeah. Definitely. I'm just a sim. We think our lives are so complicated and cockroaches are nothing. They're and everything. We're nothing. And aliens are complicated in their minds. Just it's getting more and more and more complex. Yeah. What if there were 4,000 species of humans, <gasps> but we're just on different planets? Ooh. I like uh, that. I thanks. like that a lot. That would be crazy. Been thinking about it. I wonder what the other species <laughs> of humans look like. Same, same, but different. I've heard some stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, It's found that, let's see, I read that another study on American cockroaches found that roaches have distinct personalities. A study placed 16 cockroaches in a bright area that contained a number of dark shelters. They found that some cockroaches seek shelter immediately, while some were willing to stay out a little longer. And scientists attributed these differences to individual personality traits. Get a little tan going, grab a margarita in your bright spot. What's the rush? I mean, scientifically, they proved that there are both cockroaches with anxiety and cockroaches with depression. Really? I I just made that up. (laughs) (laughs) But we have some that are so scared they run to the shelter and some that are like so apathetic they'd rather like be eaten than run (laughs) they gave these cockroaches a survey (laughs) on (laughs) hers.com yeah do you need lexapro or zoloft (laughs) maybe some prozac (laughs) it's it's yeah it's good to give them options (laughs) (laughs) it's believed that diversity in cockroaches personality may have an evolutionary advantage with some being very ready to hide and preserve their themselves while others show more neuroplasticity with these risk-taking behaviors yeah because in some situations either one would pay off yeah having totally so you got to split split the difference Mm -hmm. you can't all be wiped out at once Another social evolutionary advantage of cockroaches is that some cockroach mothers care for their young. Mothers have been recorded feeding their newly hatched nymphs food from their mouths. And not only does this nourish the nymphs, but it provides desirable microorganisms to their digestive tracts from the mothers that helps them break down difficult materials like cellulose and wood. Oh, little cellulose baby. Yeah, you got to be able to eat the wood. It's a common trope that cockroaches would be the one animal to survive a nuclear apocalypse. And that's partly true. So cockroaches are not any more resistant to radiation than a lot of other insects. Mm -hmm. Fruit flies, for one, are really resistant to radiation. But... I don't know. They're just more resistant than cockroaches. Okay. I don't know. I didn't study <laughs> fruit flies, okay? I'm a fruit fly. God, fuck fruit you, flies. You next. can teach a lesson on fruit flies next week. No, it's all you, baby. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Fine, you Twist got my me. arm. <laughs> So, but they are much more resistant to radiation than humans. Cockroaches can withstand 15 times the lethal dose of radiation for humans. And that's mostly due to the roach's cell cycle. Cells are most vulnerable to radiation during the division phase because roaches cells. Oh, my God. She's scratching my headphone and it's making a lot of sound in my ear. She's just like doing the most on my shoulder right now. She will not stop clawing my neck. I'm having and trying a great to put her time. nose in my mouth. Now she's holding the microphone. Come on, little guy. If anyone's wondering, we're not trying to be distracting, but I just <laughs> gave the raccoon a laxative. Uh, vet recommended because she hasn't been using number two. And so she won't go in her nest. So we need to keep her out of her nest briefly while the laxative kicks in. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wore all white so she can shit all over me. Yeah, so you can (laughs) see in case she does. (laughs) (laughs) So like I was saying, cells are most vulnerable to radiation during the division phase. And because roaches cells only divide during the molting phase, which happens about once a week, uh, 
many who like aren't molting when the blast goes off wouldn't really be affected by radiation at all. So they'd be able to carry on the cockroach. They're just shielded. Family tree. Like yeah. I don't feel a thing. <laughs> what? Like it's hard to survive Boys a radiation do it. blast? <laughs> <laughs> Aside from radiation resistance, cockroaches are hardy animals in general. Their bodies can survive decapitation. They can continue to take in oxygen without their head. And in larger roaches, the muscles will continue to contract rhythmically to draw air in and out. You know, sometimes I do feel life would be easier without a head. It would solve some problems. It uncomplicates. No think. Just breathe. (laughs) Just move. (laughs) Just breathe. (laughs) Just breathe. (laughs) (laughs) And this is crazy. Their heads can survive as well without the body. Now that I was not expecting. No, I don't want that. If I'm decapitated, (laughs) let my body go. Let the head rest. I would rather the head stay alive, I think. Then the body will. Yeah, yeah. then I could just Mm -hmm. live in like a glass dome. Yeah. You could like unveil me at dinner parties. (laughs) It would be funny. Put me on the Roomba. Oh, that's fine. That would be so good. <laughs> Can just like whack your head on all the furniture as the Roomba goes around. It would be really fun. Much different from my current clumsiness. So, <laughs> so their antenna will continue to wave for several hours after decomposition. De- decomposition, decapitation, <laughs> and they can go even longer if refrigerated and fed. So I'm like, how do you feed a severed head? Just but put it in the know. hole. <laughs> well, you'd put it in their mouth. Oh, yeah. And then but it where would, does it I go? I don't know where it goes. It's brain food. <laughs> yeah, straight to the brain. It's just kale. <laughs> Roaches can go without oxygen for up to 45 minutes. Oh, my God. And they can survive on very little food. They've been recorded before sustaining themselves on only glue from postage stamps. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so random. Yeah. They can eat they fucking eat anything. 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 <laughs> and they can live several months without any food at all. Is the glue on stamps, like, or not stamps, but envelopes when you lick them to secure them, is it flavored or is that just the flavor they are? No, I think they have, like, sugar in them. They They definitely are sweet. Are they? Yeah, I feel like stamps and envelopes when you like them, they're a little sweet. I don't perceive them as sweet. That's interesting. No, I think they, you don't taste that they're sweet. No, I just Yeah, you sure about that, Kat? You sure about that? I'm sure about that. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why? This is so embarrassing, (laughs) but I I remember being a kid and like licking envelopes because they were sweet. Like sometimes, (laughs) like I was like excited to lick the envelopes. To like shut them because weird they there's definitely like some kind of sweetener in them. Were you a cockroach? No, <laughs> when I, I was a little cockroach. <laughs> I used to love sustaining myself on the glue. <laughs> this thing is like attacking my headphones. Okay, little guy. Uh, this is like the most disjointed episode ever because of every like few seconds. This raccoon does something crazy. You're doing you better than like I it. could. Yeah. <laughs> she's just pulling my headphones off my head now. <laughs> Hi, I see you. She's so active. Yeah. She's she was like a lump on a log when I saw her two days ago. Yeah. She's a she like couldn't even walk a few days ago and now she ha- gets the zoomies. Uh, cockroaches have a wide range of food options, including but not limited to bread, fruit, leather, starch, and book bindings, skin flakes hair oh. um and i uh, there were a lot of like exterminator websites that have like little blog posts about cockroaches and most of them are like scare tactics to like make sure that if you find a cockroach in your house you call the exterminator and so this when they wrote that they eat skin flakes and hair they're like and they've been seen eating the skin and hair off of babies sleeping in their cribs. <gasps> what? It's like, I don't, Sir, I don't know. Maybe. Sir. <laughs> if you have skin hair envelopes in your home, yeah. you may be at risk for cockroaches. They will eat them off your body. They're going to eat your baby. <laughs> <laughs> they can also eat dead insects, human and animal waste, and clothing. And some cockroaches eat wood. 
Most cockroaches reproduce by mating. They lay cases of eggs called utheca, and each utheca contains 30 to 40 eggs, and one female cockroach can lay up to eight egg cases total. So they can have a lot of babies. Some species of female cockroaches only need to be impregnated by a male once, and then they can continue laying eggs throughout the rest of their lifespan. One and done, baby. She yeah. gets what she needs. Miss Independent. I know. She's going to make it happen. No reason to waste time finding Especially a mate every time you want to lay eggs. No ha- male. Have you all ever had a cockroach infestation? No, nope. we had cockroaches like every now and then at the island house because we live so close to the river, but it was not an infestation. I had one in Los Angeles. Ooh. We moved in and it's like they <gasps> knew about it. So they were freaking out because it's like against the law in California. Yeah. It was did, awful. Those little what's egg against sacks. The law? To like have someone move into an apartment if it has an infestation. It's actively, okay. Yeah. Infested. Uh, so they started sending in exterminators big time once we were complaining about it but it still took like a year to fix it it was awful yeah apparently they're really hard to get rid of and a lot of the species of them are like immune to pesticides and stuff so like it's very can't get the good stuff anymore Mm -hmm. it was so disgusting because you'd find those egg sack things all over your kitchen counter and like sometimes you'd like look at it and it would split open and you'd see the little nymphs like crawl out of it oh Oh my god that's horrifying yeah i do have a fun fact about that though they split open because of the pressure caused by all the nymphs breathing (gasps) in and out oh (laughs) yeah (laughs) you gotta split open one way or another sometimes you gotta pop (laughs) when no males are available american cockroach females can reproduce asexually no way Mm -hmm. i didn't know that yeah and i don't think this has been studied a ton so we're not sure if like all cockroaches can do this or just these ones but it's possible she's kneading and trying to nurse on my hand now it's so cute i know are you hungry i'll feed you at the commercial break (laughs) Uh, cockroaches are extremely fast. They can run up to three miles per hour. And I was wondering how fast that would be for a person because obviously they're really small. So three hours, three miles an hour is fast for being an inch long. Ow, she bit me. <laughs> <laughs> She's My hungry. Hand is not food. <laughs> now two of us have rabies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, So I did the math. So let's say that the average person is 67 inches tall. That's five foot seven. And so if cockroaches were human sized, assuming they're about an inch long, that means they could run 201 miles per hour. So wow. Very fast. Uh, how fast do cheetahs run? Like, do we like have a 60 comparison? miles an hour? <gasps> really? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. As far as downsides go, cockroaches can transport pathogens on their bodies, which that's really problematic. They can carry almost two dozen pathogens that are harmful to humans. And this like might not be that big a deal just in everyday life. But when you think about cockroach infestations like in a hospital, it can be really dangerous. They're also linked to allergic reactions and asthma flare ups. And while household cockroaches tend to be infested with bacteria and viruses, lab-grown and wild cockroaches can make a nutritious food source. In Thai and Mexican cuisine, cockroach head and legs are removed. Then their bodies are prepared a number of different ways. They can be boiled, grilled, dried, or fried. And if you fry them, the outside of them gets crispy, but the inside stays soft and apparently tastes like cottage cheese. That sounds so good to me. I thought the same thing. I was like, it sounds like a cheese curd. (laughs) Yes. An all natural, (laughs) non-dairy cheese curd. Yeah. For the lactose intolerant friends. Yes. Why not? Probably cheaper too. Probably. In Taiwan, omelet recipes sometimes call for cockroaches. In China, ouch, she keeps biting. In China, cockroaches are an important ingredient in traditional medicines and cosmetics. The country has over 100 active cockroach farms to keep up with the demand. And apparently a cockroach farm is like not a bad business investment because the costs are very low and you can make a lot of money. And so I'm guessing they have to, like, keep them in a sterile 
environment or yeah, sterilized? They're them? in like yeah. warehouses, and okay. like if I think if they're grown in captivity like that, they're not diseased. Yeah, I I would assume. Um, it's also possible that cockroaches could be used in modern medicine. Chinese and South Korean researchers are experimenting with using cockroaches to treat baldness, AIDS, and cancer. British the si- big three. The, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> British scientists have been conducting similar research and found that cockroach brains contain a number of molecules that are toxic to bacteria. So the molecules in roach brains have been found to kill over 90% of MRSA and E. coli bacteria in lab tests while seemingly not harming human cells. And this is huge because they could potentially use cockroach brains to develop new antibiotics that have fewer side effects than those currently on the market. We can always use a new antibiotic and let's do it right this time. No selling it to the big pharma. Right. Let's just eat cockroaches and then it's free for it's preventative. everybody. preventative. Yeah. Yeah. Just get in there. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so that's actually all I have. And what I learned from this lesson is that cockroaches have a lot more to offer than I initially thought. They're not just vermin. No, they have, they have a soul. <laughs> I learned cockroaches have a soul. <laughs> all cockroaches go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> they cross the rainbow bridge (laughs) that was a great lesson now i know so much more as well so spread the knowledge uh (laughs) tell a friend about this episode if you feel like they're lacking cockroach knowledge you know everyone could use some um and so we have to take a quick break to feed feed the baby so she stops biting me and eating my hair but we'll be right back (laughs) see you in a minute Welcome back. Are you ready to hear a second lesson? I am. We fed the raccoon. We made her pee. And we're ready for another lesson. Now Haley's holding her. I know. It's kind of funny that we... Whoever was presenting is the one holding the raccoon. It's like we have the talking stick. Yeah. It's also... It's also kind of like, you know, those videos that show like something bouncing around on the screen while they talk to you. And it's like... This is All like that. I can watch the raccoon yes. <laughs> while you tell me a story. <laughs> Keep your attention. <laughs> and for all the people that are like, it's constipated. You need to stimulate its genitals and anus. We have been doing that. Oh, yes. For Haley just got people. a front row seat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just know that I said raccoon. it's constipated and someone's going to be yelling and screaming at their thing. Be like, you have to stimulate it. No, trust me all. We know how to do this. We've, yeah. we've been here, done it before. Cat and Alec are the best <laughs> feral animal parents <laughs> around. Yeah, They've some, done squirrels. So They've done many raccoons. animals. Someone messaged me on Instagram and was like, I know someone that knows how to raise wild animals. And I was like, I do too. <laughs> me. I know. I always get like kind of offended when people say like, oh, like I have a friend who like raised a baby possum or something. They could take it. Like, oh, you don't understand. Could they? So, so could did they I. Take it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a possum though. I'm still excited for when one day that one happens. day. Yeah, yeah. that'll happen. It's a dream of mine. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have a good start. Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. So uh, we're going to go back to the year 1917. And Russia is still involved with World War I. Things aren't going well. Russia is constantly losing battles. Resources are dwindling. And the people of Russia are openly protesting the Romanovs, whose family had been reigning the Russian Empire for over 300 years. The Romanovs were removed from power and placed under house arrest in Siberia, which is arguably the best kind of house arrest. Cold. In my opinion. Yeah, very cold. (laughs) When the Romanovs are away, the Bolsheviks will play. They seized power while the Romanovs spent about a year under constant surveillance in the House of Special Purpose. On the evening of July 16, 1918, Nicholas, Alexandra, and their five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei, and their attendants, were all woken up and escorted to the basement for their safety, quote unquote. Mm. In the basement room, the family was asked to arrange themselves for a family portrait. (laughs) 
we're just going to take a little picture together. Yeah, because everyone takes pictures in a dark basement. We've That's gotta where you take them. Every single year, you guys, we wait until the last minute. We never get our Christmas cards out on time. <laughs> we're doing Christmas in July. We're not Photoshopping anyone in this year. Put on your goddamn ugly Christmas sweater and get down to the basement. <laughs> Instead of snapping a picture, a Bolshevik firing squad in the next room fired at the Romanov family and their attendants. It reportedly took about 20 minutes to complete <gasps> the job. Ooh, some of the a long time. Yeah. yeah Imagine it, being the last worse. one. I'd be like, please, just <laughs> take me away. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. Some of the family members reportedly had sewn jewels and gemstones into their clothes, which kind of served as a bulletproof vest. So it took oh, a shit. while for them to be executed yeah rough where are you going little girl it's trying to get in your shirt it's warm in there i'm sure <laughs> sometimes if you like are talking she tries to crawl inside your mouth <laughs> don't do that <laughs> the bodies were loaded onto trucks and initially buried in a shallow grave in a nearby forest and initially the bolsheviks kept the execution a secret from the public only later did they report nicholas's death and then differing and opposing information was released about the fate of the rest of the family. The cover-up and instability of the war-torn country created this rumor mill of Romanovs who actually maybe did survive the Bolsheviks' attack. Wait, did they? <laughs> they were well, in a basement. How did they escape? <laughs> Maybe they weren't actually dead. You ever uh, seen the movie Anastasia? Actually, I yeah, haven't. Have you? you haven't? No. Oh my gosh. Well, um, we're not talking about that yeah. exactly. I think today, I but didn't. You talk about her a little bit on your Peter the Great lesson. Maybe Peter the Great, or we also had the lesson on um, what's that creepy guy's name? Oh, the doll guy? Not the doll guy. Oh. The guy who oh, was Rasputin. like... Oh, Rasputin. Oh, yeah. yeah. That might yeah. have been it. He was like their it. medicine man, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or psychic or whatever. Consultant. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he was their creep master. <laughs> their creep. <laughs> <laughs> she... <laughs> Petunia. <laughs> the raccoon's like choking Haley. I was trying to riff on it. <laughs> Her claws are so sharp, and when she digs them into your neck, it's they're so very. Tickly. I'll make sure to get this YouTube video up tomorrow so that everyone can watch if they want to watch because it, it really is funny. She is so I'm, cute. I'm obsessed with her. I know I keep saying that, but that's the only words I have to describe it. Yeah, she is absurdly cute. It's, like I've never seen anything so cute. It's out of this world. Yeah, I don't think it would have been possible to not save her. There's something very <laughs> human about these raccoons. They've got human hands. She's like, hold it on for two <laughs> Got it. And they're so affectionate. Yeah, like Truly. we're not holding her against her will. She no. wants to be held all the time. And it's... she just goes bonk when you get that good spot and you're mm -hmm. petting her. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm scared of how much I love you. <laughs> if anyone wants to see a funny video, I might post it to the Night Class Eve Instagram. Yeah, you should. Yeah, but when I found this little thing, it was unconscious and cold. And I go I called Cat and I was like, I gotta save this thing. I'm with a raccoon hunter. He said it's not gonna make it. <laughs> and so I'm like, you got but I was in Alabama and I had to drive back no, to you Memphis. Weren't. Oh, yeah. I, I was, was in, in Tennessee. And I, yeah, I had to, to drive, drive back, back to, to Memphis. Memphis. <laughs> yeah. And so I told Kat, I was like, you got to Google how to save a raccoon. So she's like, you got to get it on a heat pad first. So I turned the heat pad, the heat hot seats on my uh, chair in my car on. And then she's like, you got to get Pedialyte. So I went to CBS and got Pedialyte and I put it in its mouth and it was on the heat pad. And I'm driving and like 30 minutes later, it's like the Pedialyte and the hot pad kick in. <laughs> And this thing jumps from the passenger seat to me, <laughs> climbs up my shirt, skimpers up the back of my neck, and I just happened to be recording. And I was like, and she's squealing like a pig. Yeah, and then she started like attacking the back of my head like I was an imposter, and I was so scared. I was terrified. As soon as I saw it, I was doing something in the bedroom, and I went to find Tommy. I was like, did you see Alex's video? And he's like, with the raccoon. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it sounds like there's like a velociraptor behind me. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> she was making all kinds of protests. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone thought she was like a really vicious beast, but I was like, that's the only time she did anything. Yeah, she's yeah, just she's a sweetie. Very sweet. She's my little friend. So anyway, yeah, she was cold and unconscious when I found her, and this guy I was with said she'd die if we didn't move her, so. Now she's Crucify me, <laughs> crucify me if I did the wrong thing. I had to make a split-second decision. What are you doing? I think you did the right thing. I think so, too. This is delightful <laughs> i'm really self-conscious about people judging if they don't know the full story yeah yeah that's fair. so that's anytime so i have a chance i'm like this is what happened yeah i think she certainly <laughs> would have died Haley's, Haley's <laughs> neck's all fine. red it's like all slashed up <laughs> Tommy's like where have you been when i get home okay let me let me try and get into the meat and potatoes of this lesson the impossible meat and potatoes of this lesson <laughs> <laughs> so initially the execution is kept a secret the soviets just are like covering it up and only releasing some information and so there's this misinformation that maybe some of the romanovs did survive and that's what's going on in the rumor mill two years later in berlin police officers helped a woman who had attempted to die by suicide in a canal. And when they brought her out of the freezing water, the young lady couldn't recall her name and had no documentation to help the police figure out who she was either. So she arrived at Daldorf Asylum, where for the first six months, she said nothing at all. But the nurses did observe that her body was covered in scars And when she did finally start speaking, they also noted a Russian accent. Mm -hmm. Rumors of the surviving Romanov sibling, daughter, son, inspired a fellow patient at the hospital, Clara Puhert, to suspect out loud that this mystery woman was a surviving Romanov daughter. Mm. You, she was probably so bored at that hospital, and she's like, let me just make the most interesting rumor up that I possibly can. Oh, my God. Just absolutely. for something to see. Something to see, something to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she, she was like the Miss Whistledown, except for she's <laughs> yeah. just making shit up. <laughs> and also, you kind of want it to be true, right? Yeah, like I would. Maybe did. And like, if that this. lady... Is just like suffering from a mental health crisis and has no documentation. Like it's probably in her best interest for people to think she's a princess. Uh, yeah, Grand Duchess Mm -hmm. has a nice ring to it, (laughs) and the mystery woman agreed. Yeah, she was along for the ride. (laughs) She was like, maybe I am Anastasia (laughs) or Tatiana. Why not? Those are nice names. I could do it at all. Anastasia. That's how I kept saying when I was doing my notes. (laughs) Try to get as extra. I know. I never know if it's honest. Anastasia or Anastasia. Oh, this little <laughs> petunia. You can put her on the floor if you need to. She'll probably just crawl I right back up, to. though. I want her to stay forever. I cannot wait to cut together videograms <laughs> where it's just unacknowledged, talking about Anastasia and cockroaches, and there's just a, a wild animal crawling around the screen. Just rooting around. <laughs> Yes. Oh, she's yeah. on the mic. Oh, that is so cute. Oh, man. Alec, you have to take some, like, screenshots of these to post on Instagram. Yeah, With I will. her on the mic especially. Yeah. Uh, send them to me, too, <laughs> because I want to post on my personal Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> When my two interests combine perfectly, <laughs> this yeah. is a dream situation. <laughs> you know that show, How I Met Your Mother? Yeah. This is like yeah. how we all got roundworm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all going to be sick tonight. <laughs> Just in time for the Megan the motherfucking stallion concert. Oh, I can't wait. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> but I will say I am going to sit during the concert. I will not be standing. I don't know if you'll be able to because there will probably be people standing in front of you. 
I hope everyone sits. I just <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. I just want to sit during I mean, a concert in, and in be an comfortable. ideal world. We would have popcorn and cherry cokes and be sitting at a concert, but yeah. we don't live in an ideal but world. Movie theater seats reclining. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. I will stand if I must, but I prefer to sit. Yeah. All righty. So on to the next part of the lesson. So other sources say that this mystery woman read an article about Anastasia and told the nurses that she was the missing princess. So we may never know the true order of events, but the results were the same. People came to investigate this quote-unquote princess. Former Romanov friends and servants visited the mystery woman. Some needed little convincing, as they were sure she was the princess sight unseen. Well, not unseen, on sight alone. And an old bodyguard of the Romanov family showed the mystery woman photos of the family. And then she got read and got increasingly upset. She was also known to have these, like, outbursts or become like extremely emotional others were not as easily convinced a former attendant to the sarina agreed the patient resembled the robinov <laughs> girls but was quote too short for tatiana okay to which the mystery woman replied I never said I was Tatiana. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, which one is the same height as me? I'm that one. Yeah, who do I look more like? Yeah. That sounds right. I forgot my name, so you have to tell right. me. <laughs> along with all the personal details about my life. <laughs> I'm the cool one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the pretty one? Yeah, which one is the hottest? I'm that one. Uh, I'm Rosalie. Uh, <laughs> Side note, I thought of this earlier, but I forgot to say it. If the raccoon was a boy, we could have named him Raccoonton. <laughs> For Rasputin. <laughs> Sorry. Rasputin. Okay. Raccoonton. Raccoonton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should not. I should have kept that intrusive Could thought to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, should have kept that one to myself. <laughs> Next time. I mean, so many of them land. Statistically, you have to have one that flops. <laughs> Raccoonton. Ras- Raccoonton. Get it? It just doesn't really work. It sounded perfect in my head. And then when it came off my tongue, I was like, that doesn't sound like Rasputin at all. (laughs) You tried. As you were. (laughs) So after she's like, I never said I was Tatiana, word spread that Anastasia survived the Bolshevik attack. (laughs) Is that why Anastasia became the famous one? Who has a Disney movie about her? Is because people thought she was alive. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's exactly why. Um, Anastasia Romanov, quote unquote, felt a bit cumbersome as her name. So she started going by Anna Anderson. When she was released from the hospital, a flock of supporters and opposers came down upon her seeking out the truth. Imagine having so much time in your day that you're going to go be an opposer i could see like a supporter (laughs) wanting like to take a picture of her or something but imagine taking time out of your day to go to be like you're not her it's just haters yeah people just love to do that on the internet don't go it wasn't around in the 20s they figure it out write her a letter (laughs) the 20s internet One of the opposers we'll get to was her quote-unquote uncle. Hmm. He had a personal um, motivation to okay, disprove that's her. that's fair. That's fair, but it's like, otherwise, what does it matter to you? Yeah, how does it affect you? Wouldn't it be so cool if sh- she was? Right, just Anastasia? choose to believe it. And, like, what's the harm? Like, this woman clearly needs resources yeah. just let her be give her the resources yeah. fuck it let's make a cult right let's go let's do whatever she says <laughs> <laughs> so these supporters arrive and they invite her to reside with them she starts staying at the houses slash castles of princes and dukes and just kind of gets passed around and has a place to stay and they support her financially i want to see that episode of bridgerton me too. Who would you want to stay with? Uh, none of them. <laughs> I would. I go guess with who's the, the who's the Duke's like aunt? Lady Danbury. She seems cool. Yes. I'll stay with her. That's who I was gonna say. Okay. I for sure, go with her. We yeah. would have a girls' night. <laughs> 
So Anastasia is doing much the same. Um, the more people talk to her and were like attempting to jog her memory, the more intimate details she picked up through these conversations of people being like, you know, oh, don't you remember that time when this happened? And then she could store that away as something that she knew. Okay. But more suspicious details were stacking up as well. Anastasia, the true one, knew English, (laughs) French, and Russian very well. But Anna Anderson only spoke German Hmm. Um, very well. It's weird that the Russian princess (laughs) doesn't speak Russian. (laughs) Yeah. Why did they think she had a Russian accent at the hospital? I don't know. Maybe she was faking it. Um Not sure. I mean, she obviously was because she refused to speak Russian at (laughs) all. Um, She's like, that's just not who I am anymore. I've changed. And her story was that all of the trauma that she went through um, caused, you know, these damages to her her brain and all that she knew. Which is possible. Which is fair. Yeah, that can happen with trauma. Um, But... Maybe, you know, not in this case. <laughs> what yearish are we again? I know you said it, but like when like, she was foundish. In the nineteen twenties. So okay. they were executed in nineteen eighteen and it was two years later okay. that she was found. Why are you biting? She's trying to nurse on your hand. And when they get their teeth, they start like chewing on the nipple when they nurse because they're ready for solid food. So when she needs and nurses on you, she bites. Yeah. You need a banana. (laughs) She does. She's going crazy. (laughs) Yeah. You can put her on the floor if she hurts you. (laughs) (laughs) She done had been hurting me. (laughs) Your poor neck's all red. Pain (laughs) without love. (laughs) Little one, not the face. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I think you are going on the floor, little girl. (laughs) Go on the floor before you hurt her. Or on the floor. Okay. And hell, she may crawl back in her nest. Go back in your nest. Maybe she's tired. (laughs) She bunny hopped in her nest. Okay, let's see. Let me put some aquaphor on my neck. <laughs> need aloe vera. Yeah, need you need some, ringworm I need a cream skin yeah. treatment. <laughs> Antibiotics for sure. <laughs> so yeah, the year is about nineteen twenties ish. Um, where was I in my notes? Okay, yes. Yeah, so more suspicious. Facts are are stacking up. Non-believers continued on this quest to prove Anna as a fraud. Anastasia's uncle hired a private investigator who actually came up with results. And the private investigator is like, it's really hard to escape a basement when, when you have a firing have a, squad. Yeah. <laughs> And also, I know the identity of this woman. And I've seen her and talked to her, and that's not her. It's so. not. He no, he found out the true name and identity of this oh. imposter. Okay. He was like, listen, this is very easy. This Anna mystery woman is Franziska Shanskowska, a Polish-German factory worker who disappeared in 1920, had a history of mental illness, and was in a factory explosion in 1916. So this breaking news was published in German newspapers. Twelve living Romanov family members put out a signed statement basically saying this is a fraud. It it has been proven. She is not the Anastasia. But since no definitive proof was provided, Anna Anderson being the missing, escaped Romanov daughter is way more appealing to the media, and to humans. Obviously. So that's what stuck. Yeah. She's like, Francisca, I don't know her. Francisca who? (laughs) Not me. Bitch, I'm Anastasia. Anastasia. Two good names, though. Solid names. Mm -hmm. I added Francisca to my baby names list. Would you go Francisca or Francesca? 
Francisca. Okay. F R A N Z I S K A. Oh. Oh, that's how the you Germans. would spell it. Yeah, that's wow. I would go full on. I like the it's complicated. Like uh huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a complicated girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Anderson continued on bopping between her supporters' homes for years. They continued this belief. She landed in Germany where she was a granted official yet temporary identification documents as Anastasia Romanov. Oh my god. <laughs> People just like want to play along at this they point. They want it to be true mm-hmm. and so they made it true. Yeah. She moves to America where the New York elite notice her struggles with her mental health. On one occasion, she was caught running around naked on a roof, um, and she was also known to fall into these, like, outbursts and temper tantrums. Okay. Anna stayed at a mental hospital a a few times, I believe, before being deported back to Germany. Her supporters held her up upon her return, and they're like, we are standing with you. And although she was never hard set on proving that she was Anastasia Romanov, her lawyers suggested a lawsuit so that she could get the chance at the Romanov fortune. Valued at $45 billion. (gasps) How? The royals. (laughs) I don't know. Wow. (laughs) The money would be dispersed between the Seven closest Romanov heirs, unless it could be proven that a Romanov child survived. Oh, my God. So she could get all of it? Yes. And say fuck you to all the real family members? Yes. That is crazy. (laughs) The stakes are higher than they've ever been. Yeah. Did you know that Elon Musk is actually my dad? Ew. He's my dad. Your daddy? And is he no, going to get my you real, some money? my real dad. And so I'm entitled <laughs> to his fortune. Great. And get, it's true because I say it is. Well, get the passport to prove it. <laughs> Surely I, sur- you can't I survived somewhere. a mass basement abortion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for you. You should change your name Thanks. to a uh, XYIA419. Oh. Okay. I, well, that's already it. my name. Cat's just a nickname. Right. It's phonetically how you pronounce mm-hmm. it. <laughs> <laughs> the case that they started would end up becoming Germany's longest court case ever, lasting for 13 years. But Anna was not interested in the case at all. She refused to court to go to court and stated, quote, I know perfectly well who I am. I don't need to prove it in any court of law. Okay. Maybe that's the best strategy. It is. Act so confident. She was so confident, and it led her supporters and even some non-believers to be like, that is so real. <laughs> that yeah. is so authentic. It's not even about the money. It's not. A, it's, she knows who she is. <laughs> And it wasn't like they're like, oh, well, she doesn't want to prove either way because then she could be a fraud. It was like, no, she's so real. Yeah. She is Anastasia. So her authenticity shining brighter. The judge ultimately ruled against Anna as they had failed to prove without a doubt that she was the Romanov daughter. And in 1968, this is going on until the 60s, Yeah, this is like her life. It is her life. She was found unconscious in her home, but alive and hospitalized. Her living conditions were a reflection of her mental health. She lived with 60 cats and a dog. How is that a reflection of anything but amazing mental health. (laughs) She had named him Raccoon She was extremely loved (laughs) by all her animals. Everyone was concerned for her mental health. It was a good life. His name was Raccoon (laughs) He had bright blue eyes. (laughs) After this, Anna moved back to America. She married a man named Jack Manahan, um, just in time for her visa to expire. Ooh, so that was convenient. Good timing. Jack was a history professor and a genealogist. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, and 
Oh. Was he just? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> do you think he was marrying her just to like get the inside scoop and do her family tree? I think he figure was it an all idiot. out. It's like a I moth, think moth was... to a flame. <laughs> yeah. Too close to the sun. <laughs> Genealogy and history. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, a a cockroach marrying a exterminator. It it truly is. <laughs> it's a good metaphor. It's Thank like, you. It took me just a second to remember the word the for name. cockroach. Oh, I was gonna say exterminator. <laughs> no. I that one. The longest penis. <laughs> you guys combine your brains. Cockroach exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> they seemingly had no issues though because he was paying for he was funding her life he well, paid for all of really her travels bad genealogist <laughs> i know <laughs> he fully believed she was anastasia romanov so he's holding the family tree upside down like with a <laughs> magnifying glass he probably has some other questionable beliefs as well i'm sure i didn't investigate him too thoroughly but uh who, who's to say Towards the end of her life, Anna ailed from a tumor in her intestines. She did have surgery on it, but then she had a stroke and caught pneumonia, which um, ended up killing her. She died on June 18th, 1984, and was cremated the day she died. Ooh. Uh, Suspicious? They had a, an opening at the crematorium. You gotta Pop get that booking <laughs> <laughs> while it's available. <laughs> get in that tanning bed and fry, sister. So do you take walk in? <laughs> or is it appointment only? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when DNA technology came about in the 90s, we finally got an answer. Although Anna was cremated shortly after her death, they did save a tissue sample from her tumor surgery. Mm. Her DNA was compared to living Romanov relatives and the siblings of the factory worker, Francisca, whatever her last name is. <laughs> It was a match for <gasps> Francisca. Oh. <laughs> you got me. I only paused because It was a match. <gasps> <laughs> Shocking either way. <laughs> the woman the private investigator pointed out in the 30s, that was her. You know that guy is mad. He's so pissed. He's like, guys, <laughs> I've been telling you. Nobody believed me. He's like, I should become a professor of genealogy. <laughs> and history. <laughs> and still not get shit done. <laughs> Although she wasn't a true Romanov, Anna's life inspired books, films, plays, and even a litany of other false Romanov children. So I'll end the lesson by answering the question, what happened to the real Anastasia? She was shot. She was definitely shot. <clears throat> However, back in 1979, a Russian writer and director, um, Gili Ryabov and geologist Alexander Avdonin, used clues from a Yakov Yuaksk. I'm sorry, to locate the Romanov burial site because they had never been found. But they did find them. There they found nine skeletons. And although the executioners tried to destroy the bodies with sulfuric acid, the bones remained, thus providing ample material for DNA testing. This was only revealed in the 90s, though, after DNA testing was available because the two men who found the bodies feared repercussions from the Soviet government. Oh, wow. So they kept their mouths zipped. They used DNA again in the 90s to confirm the bodies found in the 70s were the Romanovs, but they only found the Tsar, the Tsarina, and three of their daughters. The rest were attendants. They were missing Alexei and the Grand Duchess. Oh, wow. Naysayers deemed the DNA results faulty science, and conspiracy theorists believed Anastasia did survive the attack. Maybe she did. Well, you could have believed that for a couple of years. Okay. Because in 2007, about 70 meters from the initial gravesite where they found all the other bodies, they found another gravesite containing 44 charred bones, teeth fragments, and bullet fragments. They believed they belonged to a boy and a girl from just a glance at their bones, each estimated to be the ages of the missing Alexei and Anastasia. 
And this was later confirmed with DNA. Wow. DNA is amazing. I know. And it's so crazy that we just learned or started using it really in like the 90s. Yeah. And like, what else are we going to be able to discover and use and do with it? Because it feels like, I mean, it's been around for all of our lives, yeah. essentially. It's hard to imagine a time without it. It, it really is. So like you just I'm, had to guess at everything. It's basically what I do now. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to think like they discovered the double helix in like the 50s, right? I have no idea. Like my dad has met the guy that quote unquote discovered the double helix. Humble um, brag much. Well, it was really <laughs> no, discovered by cool. a woman and this guy took credit, which is why I said mm. quote unquote. Yeah, but, sounds about right. Um, yeah, and your dad, dad slapped him. Yeah, stomped on his yeah, foot. Yeah, my dad <laughs> took off his gloves and slapped him. <laughs> Gave him a wedgie. But I'm just thinking it's crazy to think that just one generation back, my parents' generation, like, they're discovering. Yeah. yeah. The technology boom. My parents were born in the 50s. Yeah. Dang. Well, we figured it out, y'all. We did yes, it. We did. That was a great Big lesson. Brain. Yeah. Thank good you job, Haley. so much. I appreciate it. It would be cool to do um, more on, like, the Romanovs and their execution maybe one day. But, yeah. Because uh, are, are you... Uh, where, where was the burial? Are they? Do they think they were killed on the side of the road? They were not killed on the side of the road. Okay. They were killed in the basement. Oh, I meant where they were buried. In a forest. In a forest. Yes. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I've read about this before, and I remember them being like, we think they buried him off the side of a road. It may have been in a forest off the side yeah. of the road. That would make sense. And since it was so cold there, that also helped with preserving the bodies that the sulfuric acid didn't have enough time to like really decompose them completely. That's dark about the sulfuric acid. I yeah, know. why do you think they tried to destroy the bodies? Because they didn't want any proof that they executed oh. the <laughs> heirs, the yeah. the Roman of the reigning family. I guess that's true. Yeah. But like who would find them? Well, these guys did. A long time later. A historian <laughs> and a genealogist. <laughs> Well, either way, that is my lesson. We have more fun facts and things to share over on Patreon.com if you want to continue listening to us. And before we end, I do want to uh, thank our listener, Calissa. She sent us a very sweet box full of like resin Many food. food that you can make. <laughs> and I made some the other day. It was really fun. Thank you, Calissa. Thank and my nephew so made one as well. Yeah, he did. And he had a blast. And he got mad at me for not reading the directions. Do what you want to do. That's right. Be who it's, you want to be. It's art. B-A-R-B-I-E. <laughs> Barbie girl. Okay, I have to go blow my nose. Okay. And by the way, I have some good facts stored up. So if you're going to stay on extra credit on Patreon, I've got some good ones. Nice. I've got a good one this week, too. Like I said, bug related, but very good. Okay. I need to find mine while you blow your nose. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Three, two, one. Class Class dismissed. dismissed. That was a great episode, y'all. Yeah, she's good energy. No, 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 no. It is good to have like a nocturnal mascot for night.